Minecraft, kiss the sky, and now we can, thanks to the new sky limit that lets us build twice as high. This is going to be episode number 50 of Minecraft Exploration and Tactics with Brian. And with a nice round number like 50, why not do something that is kind of a staple of exploration and tactics? I'm going to go spelunking and caving and talk about different stuff. I'll talk about the recent Ultra Hardcore series as well as speed challenges. And yeah, we'll go spelunk, collect some resources, and fight some bad guys. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to Exploration and Tactics with Brian. I have been walking around a little bit to the north of the Northern Arch, and I saw some cave systems and discovered there was a ravine down here. And so I figured we could explore it together. And in the act of exploring it, I would also have an opportunity, lots of iron, which I actually need to mine. And so I'm going to need to actually try to remember to try to pay attention to resources. That iron on the ceiling wasn't the easiest thing to go after immediately. So I'm not going after it right now. Um, I would really like to get into a cave system to kind of head on down. But the main thing that I want to do today, or at least to get started today, is to talk about a few different topics. I wanted to talk about speed challenges. I wanted to talk about the Ultra Hardcore series, Season 4, that various big names participated in. And... Yeah, possibly talk more about the mob system that I've been working on. But the first thing I really need to do is get into a cave system where I'm not about to fall, so that I need to concentrate less on playing the game, so that I'll be able to concentrate more on talking to you all. And so perhaps I'll just hop downstairs like this. And so we will grab that. We will hop in there. And we will see where we land. All right. Kind of down deepish, but at the same time, I haven't heard anyone. I actually haven't seen a hostile mob. I don't think I've ever been on... Yeah, I'm on hard difficulty. Okay. Don't think that I had accidentally somehow gotten into... Now, here's a thing that just occurred to me. Is there any chance this could be a mushroom biome in the new thing after... No, it still thinks it's a forest. Right, because Anvil... What is that up there? Oh, it's a creeper. Okay. <laughs> I, for some reason, thought it looked like tree leaves, which is ridiculous in a cave system. If you see something green, obviously it's a creeper, so I don't know why my brain thought that. And But yeah, it seems really odd that it took so long to like encounter my first enemy in here, because there's definitely a lot of uh, dark area down here, places for bad guys to spawn. All right, but in any case, sorry, I'm taking a long time to actually get to talking about anything. Oh, yeah, and I want to try to do some, like, sprinting through cave systems, except for I need to... Oh, it runs contrary to the fact that I need to collect resources as well. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is Ultra Hardcore. So, for those of you who have not finished watching Season 4 of Ultra Hardcore, uh, which only lasted for three episodes... Um, you should go finish watching that if you don't want spoilers. Um, but by the time this airs, I bet you it will already be a few days old. And so hopefully everybody's caught up on that. And yeah, so first of all, the format, I mostly liked it. Uh, I definitely liked the idea of having teams. I thought four-person teams were pretty big. Um, but I guess since they had eight people, it was kind of the natural thing to do. I was wondering... Uh, what it would have been like if they had, like, three teams of three uh, instead, simply because if you have three teams, it becomes kind of like the crazy, you know, Team A could be trying to attack Team B, and then Team C comes in and tries to attack Team A, and uh, I feel like a lot of weird stuff could happen in those situations. Um, and so it seems like that could be good, but at the same time, the danger there, if you have three teams is that there's so huge of a risk and penalty of being on the attack uh, that it kind of makes all three teams want to hang back because the first two teams that would end up engaging each other would probably both be likely to take some casualties. Uh, and then whatever team just kind of sat back and waited as the third team then would be at a big advantage. And so everyone would just kind of try to sit back and wait, and that would probably make things boring. And yeah, I don't know if there's some way to artificially encourage the conflict between the teams 
like since they have a mod already i wonder if they could make like the mod like make it such that if you kill another player like it drops an extra golden apple i just heard an enderman and i heard a little bit of a skeleton a little bit earlier either uh or as well but now it seems like i'm at a dead end i really haven't found a cave other than this ravine need to find where this opens up into a cave i definitely hear stuff over here somewhere and yeah maybe i should just dig towards it maybe i'll do that it will also give me an opportunity to collect more cobble, which I will eventually need uh, to build more of the mob system, I expect. And this is not necessarily the most efficient way to tunnel over in this direction, but I think I'm only a few blocks away from the zombie now, so. So yeah, overall, I like the format of having the teams. I wonder if they can continue to kind of jiggle with the format of uh, how they do the teams and things. Uh, but I was happy the way they keep kind of mixing it up. Uh, and so it was still a very compelling video. I need to listen again. The zombie sounds pretty close. Did I just see him for a moment? No, I did not. All right, now he's really close. But he also might be like above me or below me. One thing I've been meaning to do that I haven't done yet, and of course I forgot to do it again this time, is to bring a piston along as a way to kind of like probe for holes and cave systems. All right, I need to go down a little bit and see if he's down. And if he's not, then I'll go up. I could not tell if that was getting louder or softer. I think it's getting softer down below, and so I am going to try going up a little bit. Um, so yeah, I found it an uh, interesting, compelling video, and I hope they continue to tweak the format. Now I don't hear the zombie at all. I'm really confused. Did he just despawn? Did he, like, fall off of a cliff somewhere in whatever cave system I'm heading to? This is really problematic in terms of me being able to find a cave system. Now I'm just digging around randomly. I might have to go back over to the ravine. I hear something kind of off in the distance, but... Yeah, this is not good video. I'm switching back to the ravine, and we'll go find somewhere else to look. Um, yeah. Uh, as is usually the case with those things, obviously the guys are under a lot of stress, and so I know that causes you to make mistakes. Um, having done some Race for the Wool, I know some of what that is like. I expect it's kind of like even more pressure and ultra hardcore. Um, but at the same time, I was uh, disappointed in a few fundamental errors that people made uh, that really frustrated me. And so, for example, um, Vintage Beef at one point... Uh, was a ways into things and was still using a wooden pick rather than throwing it away and using a stone pick. Um, and so that was frustrating because he's just kind of like wasting time. You don't need to preserve resources. In a normal Minecraft world, when you're not in a speed challenge, there's plenty of stone. You should immediately throw away your wooden pick and start using stone picks. And so that was a little bit of frustrating uh, for me to watch. Whoa, I accidentally just uh, hopped right over a hole there. And then uh, Baj, when he was crafting armor, crafted it in exactly the wrong order. And so he like crafted like shoes and pants and hats for everybody. And like the three of those things put together take cost like 16 pieces of iron. And if instead he had made a chest plate and leggings, uh, then that would have only cost 15 and it gives you more armor values. And so that was extremely frustrating for me. Um, if you're gonna craft armor and you have a bit of iron, you have to start with chest plate. It is the most efficient at giving you the most number of shirts per iron ingot. Is there a dungeon over there? No, it's just gravel, I think. Um, yes, yeah, so that was frustrating for me. And then, I don't know if it would have been a good strategy or not, but then finally when the teams, uh, when one team was going to attack another, they, uh, I was thinking that since they had so many bows and arrows, Oops, I did not finish killing you off. Since they had so many bows and arrows, I wonder what it would be like now with the new building height if people had just, like, climbed up. I'm not sure how high you can fire an arrow, but I think it's only, like, 30 blocks up into the air or something. 
And so I think it would have been an interesting strategy, potentially, uh, for a couple of those guys who have just gone, like, maybe B00 and Etho, to just, like, pillar up into the air and then be kind of, like, uh, walking around on a pillar. Not on a pillar, but, you know, like, just bring a ton of cobblestone and make yourself a little walkway, like, 40 blocks up in the air. And uh, basically at some point get over the other team. And then they'd be able to, like, fire arrows down on top of them, but the other team wouldn't be able to fire back up because they were too high and their arrows couldn't go that high. And so I wonder if just getting an immense height advantage once you have a bow and arrow uh, could be a way that you could kill uh, other team in the Ultra Hardcore. I'm not sure if that's a good strategy or not because obviously you, especially in SMP, like, you know, one wrong move and, you know, like, accidentally shift or glitch or something, and then you fall and you die. And so maybe that wouldn't work. It has its own set of risks. Um, but that was one of the things that I was thinking about that I would have liked to have seen people, uh, consider or talk about. Okay, this seems to be just kind of going straight down to some obsidian, but there's some iron here, and I said I was going to mine stuff, and so I better mine it. There's some redstone down there, but right now I have a fair bit of redstone back home, and I'm not really itching to get any more. And so I think I will leave it. But let's head back up into the cave system and find more places to explore. Um, let's see. And yeah, I also, I think it's the usual kind of like heat of the moment kind of stuff, but people were talking about like, you know, Etho was kind of like getting itching to try to kill a spider. And fortunately he got, uh, got smart um, and didn't try to do it, but basically, like, they had a mine shaft, and so they could easily get string without having to kill spiders. And also, he was thinking about doing it before he'd gotten armor. Like, priority one is get armor. Once you've got some armor on, then if you need to take on some mobs in order to get the materials that you need, you know, that's okay. But priority one is get armor, and so you should just try to get armor as safely as possible at the beginning of the Ultra Hardcore series. Um, Doc M, while he continues to be not a great fighter, uh, you know, kind of button pusher and has to, like, deal with more lag than some of the other players, um, did a good job, I thought, of kind of, like, organizing his team. Um, and, in fact, like, things could have turned differently if it wasn't for Doc, because Doc was really trying to get them to get the move on and head over uh, to attack the other team. And if they hadn't gone at the moment that they went... Pause on pause, might have had time to craft his golden apple. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you saw how close the final outcome was. And so that one good golden apple could have, like, completely turned the tide. And so if they had, you know, dilly dallied for another, you know, 90 seconds before they got over there, it could have had a different outcome. And Doc was really the one who was pushing everybody to say, you know, come on, we have the advantage, we have to take advantage of it right now. Um, and so I thought he did a good job uh, kind of like being in a, in a leadership role to make sure that people were thinking about strategy and trying to do the right thing at the right time. Um, so kudos to Doc on that one. Um, and yeah, I also expect the internets uh, are probably happy about the fact that Etho managed to finish things off because let's face it, we all love Etho. Um, and so when Etho lost, everyone was sad. And when Etho wins, everyone is happy. And so that was, I guess, just kind of good from everyone's point of view. And it was also good from the point of view of, um, basically, there were, uh, well, I guess good, yeah, managed to last down to the last two people again. And so, yeah, I think I maybe underestimated good, like, when I was doing my previous ultra hardcore predictions. Um, he did a good job surviving through this one and through the last one. And this one, I thought, like, his strategy was much more reasonable um, in terms of what they were trying to do. They got themselves into a bit of trouble and didn't explore a whole lot of their over overworld. Yeah, so that was one of the things they were talking about after the match, is I guess they were supposed to have kind of mirror image islands that they were going to, so it would be completely even, except for the islands turned out to be kind of, like, not mirror reflected or something, and so it seemed like... Etho's team got to start on kind of the good, fortunate side of the island that had more resources, and uh, Good's team started on the other side of the island that didn't have as good stuff. Um, but yes, then there was also, you know, Vintage Beef looking at the Enderman, uh, kind of glitchy behavior. That's just, you know, unlucky. And, you know, that can happen to anyone and is just kind of unfortunate. Um, yeah, and so I'm sure those guys are going to continue to play more, and so... 
more chances to play, gives more, you know, chances to kind of even things out and see what happens differently next time. Oops, that... Wow. So I was trying to place a brick here, but I guess I'm inside this torch, and so it decided to place it against this torch over here. And so that was a little kind of weird and glitchy feeling, although I guess it was the behavior of the game as it is intended, even if it's unexpected. All right, I'm back in this ravine. Where is, like, more cave system? I would really like to get into kind of a long cave where I can do some more kind of free running and try to sprint through the cave and light it up quickly for fun, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Let's try going down this way and see if we find anything. And yeah, there's probably... No, I already came all the way to this end, right. So, surely it looks like maybe somewhere up top there's somewhere else to go. Actually, eh, there might be... Maybe there's somewhere up here. I'm going to be really disappointed. I thought for sure, you know, oh, there's a ravine down here. There's going to be plenty of, you know, like openings into other cave systems and things that I will find. And I've been down here for a little bit, and I really haven't found much of that. All right, I think I'm actually going to edit out for a moment and try to find somewhere to go explore to keep talking. So I will see you guys in a moment. All right, so the cave went nowhere. And so I was back up in the overworld, and I made a flint and steel so I could start burning down this big, thick forest over here that was making it hard for me to see another cave system. And then it starts raining, which is putting all my fires out. And so that is a real bummer. A cat and a dog now have teleported over to me for no reason. So there's definitely a bug in the game that even when your pets are sitting, it's like all of a sudden when you get back into chunks where they are far enough away that they would need to teleport, uh, but close enough that they're loaded that they, like, end up teleporting to you. This also happens when you, like, leave the game and then restart the game. There's an Enderman over here that I would not mind killing. I don't know if this is going to be a big danger to my dogs, but I, uh, I'm going to do this anyway. Hooray, I got a pearl. All right, night is about to fall, and I have to make all these stupid critters... Oops. Uh, sit down. All right, let me get the rain off, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've swept away uh, the rain. But yes, despite the fact that all these guys are sitting, um, there are definitely a number of game situations where all of a sudden they decide, Oh, Brian, we're so happy to see you that we are going to, you know, all stand up and then teleport to you. And I think it's basically if the chunks where they are sitting get unloaded and then get reloaded, I think is the mental model that I have that explains it. Because basically if you walk far away and come back like I just did, sometimes that happens. Or if I exit the game and then re-enter the game, sometimes that happens. And that is really annoying. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure what to do about it. It does appear that all of my animals have grown up at this point, and so I have like four adult dogs and five adult cats, and so that's kind of cool and useful, I guess. All right, I still have more stuff I want to talk about, but I want to do more spelunking, but it means I actually like have to find caves, and I'm not sure where to find them. I have a bit of inventory at this point, so I'm going to drop it off, and then maybe we'll go down to the village and try to find some caves over there. So I will see you guys in a short bit. All right, I have just arrived at the village by rail which is getting overrun with villagers, but that's a good thing. And now it seems to me, I think it's, yeah, right around here, or maybe it's right around here, I think between these two houses, that a few times I've heard, like, skeletons or zombies underground, and I just heard, like, a cave noise as well. And so I think I want to try digging down here, but I'm also worried about, like, all the villagers falling in a hole, because I think that's what happened to Doc in terms of, like, there being some glitch in the game that the villagers could all fall down in a hole, and then they would keep reproducing up here and then continue to fall down in the hole. And so maybe I actually won't dig a hole in the village, and instead we'll start somewhere a little ways away from the village and then try to dig over in that direction and see if we can find a cave system underneath the village, maybe, possibly. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start digging, and then hopefully I'll find a cave system, and then I'll bring you guys back in. All right, well, I appear to have found a cave system pretty quick. And, well, is it a cave system, or is it just a little narrow inlet? No, it looks like it's going somewhere. Great. Okay. Just what we needed. 
some video to back the audio as I keep talking. All right, so I talked a bit about Ultra Hardcore. I guess the other thing I want to talk about is the Kilogast Speed Challenge that I redid. I just chose to redo it uh, kind of for fun because I wanted to do another speed challenge or I wanted to do something else other than exploration and tactics and I was trying to come up with ideas and I thought that would be fun to redo. I didn't realize when I was redoing it that um, it was almost a year to the day of the original challenge. I think it was like off by one day um, and so I think like Etho originally posted posed it like on April 12th of last year and then I redid it on like April 11th of this year or something um, and so that was I don't know somehow interesting or fortuitous to me afterwards when I realized that and yeah there's always this little bit of water that sometimes is really hard to get kind of like your stealth unstuck from oops and I just updated the water and now it's spilling out everywhere where is the source brick uh, but yes, um, so I managed to kill a ghast in under 12 minutes, and I was very proud of myself. Uh, and I'm still pretty pleased with myself about that. Um, what you didn't see is I did actually do multiple attempts, and I had originally completed it in just about 20 minutes. My original time from when I did it a year ago uh, was about 23 minutes. I need to create some sticks so that I can create some torches, torches, torches. Brian needs a whole lot of torches, hooray. Okay, and continue. And I could use the coal and the iron when I see it. Uh, yeah, so my original time was 23 minutes and so I was happier with the 20 minute time. And once again, in that uh, version of the challenge, I did manage to get into the nether in like around 10 minutes, but then it took me forever to find a gas in the nether. I got kind of a bad nether. Uh, that had some hilly terrain and lots of big lava pools and the gas just weren't spawning and then one spawned um, but I didn't manage to find it before he despawned um, oops there is a skeleton who just shot over my head there he is hello I'm going to practice using my bow and not do a very good job yeah I really need to practice like not taking damage against enemies another thing I was thinking about is that for practice, I wonder if I should, like, get rid of iron armor and just, like, go into caves in, like, leather armor or something less and, like, just, you know, stone tools or something in order to kind of practice either initial conditions for speed challenges or harsh conditions for, you know, ultra-hardcore series or different things like that in order to get more practice. But I could also just try not to let the enemies hit me and, you know, whenever I see a new bad guy, uh, just try really hard to dodge and different things. And so I should really practice that. And so in any case, I had this uh, kill, a speed, kill a gas speed challenge, and I went ahead and I rendered the video where I did it in 20 minutes, and I was reasonably pleased with that. And I went and I watched the video, and I decided I didn't want to air it because I was being very negative. Like, when the gas weren't spawning, I was, you know, just really frustrated. Um, and I always hate it when people, uh, when I'm watching other people's videos... And they're like, you know, gosh darn it, where are all the gas? They never spawn when you need them to and stuff like that. And then I was doing that myself. Uh, and so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to throw out that footage. I'm going to try it again. And this time I'm going to be more positive. And it turned out that the uh, when I tried it again, I ended up finding a surface lava pool, which I had forgotten that apparently Etho had said that that was against the rules in the original challenge. But oh well, tough luck. I changed the rules. I used a surface lava pool. Um, in the original challenge, like back when it was in Minecraft beta, uh, finding a surface of lava pool would be extremely lucky um, because you don't often find them. Now in Minecraft 1.2, where lava makes noise, it actually turns out that there are a fair number of lava pools that are either on the surface or just near the surface and you can kind of like hear them under the ground. Um, and so it's a little bit more reasonable to kind of like not exclude them anyway if you were kind of like starting the challenge today. It definitely makes it easier if you happen to get lucky, but there's, honestly, in all the speed challenges, there's a ton of stuff that, uh, depending upon exactly what happens, you get kind of lucky or unlucky, depending upon exactly where you spawn and how your nether spawns and all kinds of different things. So I don't mind that. I was happy about my time uh, getting it in under 12 minutes. And then the next day, like, someone posted uh, a time where they did it in, like, seven and a half minutes, um, which is just crazy. 
uh, super fast. And at the same time, it still looks like there was like even more to optimize. And so I wonder, you know, if everything goes right, if you could do it in like six minutes or maybe even five minutes, I have no idea. Uh, but in any case, I was happy to see people doing better like that. And so they posted it as a video response. And so of course I accepted that as a video response. Um, and yeah, by all means, if I'm doing speed challenges, whether they be speed challenges that I've initiated or Etho has initiated or whomever has initiated, uh, feel free to post them as response videos. And if they are, you know, on topic and basically do the, you know, challenge, I'll be happy to accept them as video responses. Um, yeah. And then the other thing about that is um, that video was pretty popular. Um, someone posted it on Reddit, uh, which I think ended up earning me a bunch more views on that particular video. And the fact that it was short, like a lot of Let's Play videos that I upload, like end up being like a half hour or more. And like people who don't often watch Minecraft videos or aren't into Let's Plays aren't going to just, you know, randomly watch someone's 30 minute video when they don't know much about who you are or what you're up to. But when it's a little 12 minute video that's like a speed challenge and something different, that seems to be something that is attractive for new viewers to watch. And so if you happen to be a new viewer or a new subscriber who came as a result of that video, welcome. Uh, I hope you might enjoy some of the other stuff that I do on the channel. Uh, but I definitely enjoy the speed challenges and they are nice little kind of like bite-sized one-off videos that you can, you know, choose to just watch that video and not have to watch anything else. Whereas a Let's Play like Exploration and Tactics like this often has kind of more of a storyline going on. And so if you don't know a whole lot about me and what I'm up to in the world, it's not always as easy to just, you know, watch one video and really enjoy it. Although some of these caving expeditions hopefully you can. And I need to make sure that I'm healing now that I'm fighting some Endermen. Uh, who could do some serious damage to me. And it looks like we have found another big open ravine. All right, so this is turning into good stuff for caving. And yeah, people have offered uh, various suggestions for other speed challenges. It sounded like when Etho posted the companion speed challenge that he had some other speed challenges already in mind. And so I think I am unlikely to initiate a new speed challenge of my own anytime soon even though I do have at least one or two good ideas in mind. People have also suggested some good ideas in the comments. Yeah, there's a fair number of things now that the Minecraft technology tree, uh, I think that's what you describe it, like tech tree, basically kind of like starting from nothing. You can build this, which then enables you to build this, and then if you get these other items, then you can build this. Uh, with the addition of kind of all the stuff in the nether and potions and different things, uh, the tech tree has become... Uh, a lot kind of longer and taller or wider or whatever the correct word is that I'm looking for. Which creates... Oops! I heard the Enderman teleporting, but I think that was just because he hit water and not because I looked at him. Hopefully. Nevertheless, I am and I do see him down there. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be angry with me. He just keeps injuring himself in the water. And there are a number of other mobs down there. Um, I think I will actually go down there, though, because I'm afraid of falling down in there by accident, and so it's better to just go down here on purpose uh, and deal with the mobs here now. Hello, skeleton! So yeah, I have other ideas for speed challenges, but it sounds like Etho does as well, and obviously he has, you know, many more viewers than I do. And so if he might come out with another one soon, I'll wait for him to post one and I'll do that. And then maybe when there's more of a lull in speed challengeville, uh, I will post some of my own challenges. Another thing I have, possibly... I don't think I have mentioned it, actually. Uh, and so, yeah, I'll go ahead and disclose an idea I have here, which is if you basically restrict yourself and say no smelting, basically you're not allowed to use a furnace, um, it can make a lot of things a whole lot more interesting or more difficult. Um, because without smelting, it makes it much harder to get iron. You can get iron drops from zombies, I think, as a rare item drop. I don't know that I've gotten a single rare item drop yet in this game. And it's not like I haven't killed a bunch of bad guys. Maybe I did get one and I already forgot. Um, I can't remember for sure, so I could be lying there. And that zombie seemed to... Did he, like, pathfind away, like, all the way up around me and then choose to go here and then lost me and that's why he ran up here? Or did I just... Yeah, I think he walked all the way up here in order to, like, come around and get me again. 
because he didn't want to take the drop of the, oh right monsters do not like to drop four four blocks and take fall damage that's another way to kind of exploit the ai and so you can just drop away four blocks away from a zombie or something and then he'll go you know find you know some other crazy way to try and go get you or something i think that's another experiment that i can do as i finish off more of the mob system and have kind of an unlimited supply of zombies to experiment on conveniently at some point in the future. I'm sure the mob system is still going to take a whole lot of work. And one of the reasons that I'm caving right now, well, one of the reasons I just, I just had a bunch of things that I wanted to talk about, and this is something that I can do pretty much on autopilot, and so it gives me a chance to talk, but at the same time have some sometimes entertaining Minecraft video on the screen. I also have the music back on. For the first time in forever, I've had the music off for a while, and I really like the music, and so I don't know why I did that. And so the music is back on. Hopefully you can hear it somewhat in the background, but it's not too loud. All right. And I got distracted. Right. So yeah, basically, if you just impose the article artificial restriction of no furnaces for smelting, like... Just basically don't use a furnace so like even if you find it's not like don't craft a furnace even if you find a furnace in a village in the blacksmith or something like don't smelt anything that makes it much more difficult to get iron uh you can still find it in various chests or by killing zombies you could get some iron ingots but then without iron it's much har harder to stay armored up um and until you manage to get an iron pick somehow uh you can't mine diamond other than by uh, creeper mining it or explosively mining it, which is not particularly profitable because if you use creepers or TNT to explode diamond bricks or basically, you know, any kind of brick, um, a lot of the material just kind of like explodes, you know, and is destroyed forever. And so while you might get some diamonds from a creeper explosion in like a, you know, pocket of diamond ore. I should really be sprinting through this. I'm really trying to learn to do that, and I keep forgetting to do that. Um, yeah, it's still an awful way to try to get diamonds. And yeah, so I was thinking about trying to do something like, what's the fastest, you know, speed challenge? How fast can you craft an enchanting table without ever using a furnace? And I think that that might be one that would take an hour or possibly even longer uh, to do. And so that was like one idea for a speed challenge that I had. Uh, but even something like kill a gas, to like go back and do kill a gas, which apparently you can do in, you know, a small number of minutes. But all of a sudden, if you're not allowed to use a furnace, then it gets harder again because you need a bit of iron in order to do the buckets uh, in order to craft the nether portal. And so you'd end up having to find a dungeon in order to get the buckets or something. And you'd still need an iron ingot in order to light the portal on fire. Unless you happen to get lucky and there's a lightning storm and can somehow get the lightning to ignite the portal. Like there's all kinds of like crazy... Aha! Here is a mine shaft and another ravine. I'm completely lost at this point, but that is fine. Brian does not mind being lost underground because, in general, I never try to find my way. I just spelunk until I get tired, and then I carve a new way back up to the surface. I hear a spider. I'm worried that it might be a cave spider. We have some other glitchy... Oop! Hello, creeper! Thing going on over here. There's a skeleton over in the distance over there. So let's do things one at a time. Creeper, you are dead, sir. My favorite phrase of Kurtz to use these days. Wow, I think that skeleton fell of fall damage right at the end, possibly. Or died of fall damage. He obviously fell with fall damage or whatever I just said that didn't make much sense. Hello, Skelly. I think I hear someone behind me. Yep, I do. And thank you for the good sword that allows me to do the double tap. And since I see this creeper here, I don't want him to sneak up and fall on my head. Oop. That was not a successful double tap. But we're still alive because we have lots of armor and food. And yes, once again, this is the the danger of having all this good armor and stuff. It means I don't have to play very well. And so I should really uh, try harder not to take damage. So that when the time comes... And I'm in speed challenges or hardcore or other situations where you can't really afford to take damage. That I am capable of playing well and dealing with it. Alright, I think also I've been talking for a while at this point. And so I should probably look at the time to see if we might be 
done with an episode, and next time we might pick back up right here in the mineshaft and continue splunking. So, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a good day.